Hey, YouTube viewers. Dr. Bob's Last Chance Garage here. I haven't had a lot of videos lately because I haven't had a lot to fix on my cars. But if you notice, this Corvette behind me is a little dusty. It's been sitting for a while because I figured out in the spring that I need new ones of these. Now, brake hoses are easy to replace. They're not expensive. But that's not why I'm making this video. I wanted to take you along and show you why I need new brake hoses, how I figured that out. Even though the car seems to stop just fine, and on the outside, nothing looks wrong. So let me take you along a little diagnostic journey. I figured out I needed new brake hoses, which on the Corvette rear suspension are on the back trailing arm, running right parallel with it. it. Looks fine. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with that line, except that if you look up at that fitting, that fitting right there looks a little rusty. Now I don't take my car out in the rain or the snow. So there's really no reason for that to be rusty. And like I said, the car seems to stop fine, so why do I think I need new brake hoses? Well, this all occurred to me when I was flushing the brake system this past spring, something that's good to do every few years. Let me show you what comes out of this rear caliper. Now, bleeding brakes on an older Corvette like mine, you've got a two-part caliper. So you've got a bleeder for each side. Let me show you what comes out when I try to bleed this caliper. So the setup is to use a vacuum bleeder. This will show how much vacuum you're developing. And that will pull a vacuum on this caliper here drawing fluid through that into this reservoir. Now, no, I've got a little bit of vacuum built up already. And ordinarily, you would start seeing this reservoir fill up with brake fluid being drawn from the system. Something this point should be coming through. So with a vacuum bleeder, you pump it so you develop a vacuum, and that should be drawing fluid from the system. As you can see, lines are pretty much dry. I know I have fluid in here, so the question is why isn't it coming out? Let's try the other bleeder on the other side of this caliper and see if anything comes out of that because it is possible for there to be a restriction between the two halves of the caliper. There's a passage through here with an O-ring. It's possible that could be clogged or obstructed. I'm getting nothing out of either side of the caliper. Now, one thing that I usually do for my cars 
if they're available, I get a speed bleeder or a quick bleeder. And what this is, it's a regular bleed screw, but it has a check valve in it, spring-loaded check valve. It allows fluid to go one way out, and then it closes when the, it feels fluid coming back into the caliper. So it prevents you drawing air into the caliper. What I'm going to do is replace these bleed screws with these speed bleeders and then pump on the brake and see if anything comes out of the bleed screw that way. I'll do the outer one first. Now these speed bleeders were a genius invention when they came out. They have a little check valve, a little check ball that prevents fluid from going back in. Also prevents air from being drawn back into the caliper but it allows fluid to come out. They used to be very high quality items. Now, this is a generic doorman item. Fits the Corvette, but because the bleeder depends on there being a seal on the threads so that no air gets drawn back past the threads, now it looks like they're minimizing their expenditure on sealant. So one way to prevent fluid being drawn or air being drawn back into the caliper, just put a wrap of Teflon tape on it. That's usually enough to keep it from allowing air to be drawn back in. So the check valve doesn't allow air to be drawn back in. The sealant on the threads doesn't allow air to be drawn back in. And just as an aside, one of the reasons I don't suspect the caliper, although maybe it is the problem, it's because I replaced these calipers when I got the car. It's a habit of mine that you end up replacing eventually the entire brake system and all the hoses and fluids when you buy something that's older. So I just do it right off the bat. Save myself a lot of headaches. There, that's seated. Now let me open it a bit, and if there's fluid flowing when I step on the brake, it should show up in this reservoir. There, now we've got some fluid pumping. Let's see how much will come out when I just put a vacuum on the system. With that much vacuum being drawn, this should be filling up, but it's not. So I'm suspecting there's a blockage. The most likely place for that blockage is in that rear brake hose. So let me change it out. Let's see if that clears up our problem. Now I'll try to show you this whole replacement procedure, but it's kind of tight. You can see the hose has two different kinds of ends on it. One just has a 5 8 hex and it screws into a fitting, creating a seal on the inside there and the other has a tube nut with a flare fitting there that this short piece of metal line that goes to the caliper uh, screws into. So the first thing to do is break loose those fittings, well this fitting here, first clean it up a bit, it's got a little bit of sand sitting on it and then undo the over here and then put in the new one.
parts loose. Remove the clip that retains that end of the brake line with your favorite method with pliers. Sometimes channel lock work best at this angle. That needle nose will do best. And normally, this would start dripping brake fluid. Let me bring you down here. Normally, a line disconnected like that would be dripping brake fluid. The fact that it's not indicates this might be clogged. Now for the fitting here. The line it's connecting to is attached to that bracket on the frame with one of those clips. And, I don't know if you can see, but immediately brake fluid is dripping out of it. So let's get the new one on there. I'm going to put a dab of anti-seize on the thread so that they don't freeze in this fitting. So I'll tighten that down here. And then... got a kind of hex fitting there that fits into that bracket on the control arm, or the trailing arm I should say. And before I put that clip on, I screw this fitting in there. There we go. I don't know if you can see, there's that hex shape, or at least a flat on that brake line there. And now, I'm getting flow. It's dripping out of everywhere. So let's tighten that up. The flare wrench. Let's put this clip on. Give a final back off a little bit and snug it down. Make sure that flare fitting, the flare union is solid. Dry it off. And that's that. That is a super easy fix. That's why I replace brake lines as soon as I get an old vehicle. Let's make sure there's no leaks anywhere. Doesn't seem to be. All right. Now let's bleed those brakes and you'll see the difference in how quickly things come out. So I've topped off the master cylinder. I've opened this bleed screw. Now let me pump this up and develop some vacuum and see if it's going to draw fluid. All right, now you can see the level in this cylinder is rising as I put a vacuum on it. I'm actually drawing fluid through that brake hose with just a few inches of vacuum. Nothing was coming out before. Right, what I'm going to do, I don't seem to be getting any air out of this system now, so whatever air was introduced when I put that new brake line in, it's probably all taken care of. You see, despite it bouncing around, it's gone up from about here to about here just drawing a vacuum on it. 
So I got fluid flowing now. How clogged was this? Well, let's see. Can't blow through it. A little bit of flow in the reverse direction, but nothing toward the caliper. What do I think happened? Well, if you see this corrosion right here, if you see this, if you can see this corrosion right here, that may not be corrosion from the outside in, but rather from the inside out. This brake fluid is hydrophilic. It likes water. It'll hold moisture. Perhaps some moisture was sitting right there for a long period of time on the inside of this hose. Gradually, you can also see it's starting to degrade. I got some cracks in the rubber there. But this is a clogged line. Doesn't look too different from the other side, which is not clogged. Now here's the hose on the other side, installed at the same time. You can see there's no corrosion on the outside of that hose, and it flows just like a brand new one. So I'm not going to do anything to that. If I do ever get any restriction in it, I've got another hose ready to go on there. This is how easy it should be to blow through one of these lines. Don't know if you can hear that. Should be easy to blow through one of these lines. So this rust has expanded, constricted the line, maybe the rubber is breaking down inside, even though it's a Goodyear hose, it's from 2008. I don't know if that's a date code, but it's a 15 year old hose with corrosion on the inside. Maybe I should have flushed my brake lines more frequently. Maybe I'll be doing that from now on. Now that i got speed bleeders on there, it'll be super easy to bleed these brakes. All right, my YouTube viewers, thank you for watching. Moral of the story, flush your brake system. Other moral of the story, if you have a vacuum pump like this and you're not getting fluid out from one of the corners of your car, you might suspect the brake hose. Even if you replaced it, even if you restored it from top to bottom, things go bad. You need to redo what you've done already, even though in your mind it's still brand new. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful.